and her family in Tennessee. Hey, Dustina. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God. How are you and your family doing? Oh, we are doing good. We're warm and toasty now, so praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We prayed much for you this week. We prayed much for you this week. My personal prayer was that you would get a new heater. I don't know how God worked it out, but you, or you said you're warm and toasty. That's good. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayers and blessing the Branham family. Praise God. Give a shout out to Michael for, to me, will you please? I'll sure do it. And I can tell you the heating, um, the Lord really came through. We did not need a new unit. We had several people come out, and the last guy that came out, he was able to fix it for $170. Hallelujah. So that was a big chunk from 7000 <laughs> let me tell you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Praise God. We Praise gave him God. a little Christmas bonus, so it only cost us about 200 So, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, Dustina and the Branham household, they were without heat this week. Their heater shut down, and they had estimates that they needed $7,000 for a new compressor, a new unit. And God blessed them, and they got it fixed for $170. They are warm. Praise God, Michael's warm, Dustina's warm, uh, Nathan is warm, Nikki's warm, and, and Destiny's warm. And I was praying much for Destiny because Destiny had been sick. And so we believe God to keep Destiny covered with the blood of Jesus and not let the cold affect her. And so, Dustina, we thank God for what he's doing in your family. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, Dustina, give another shout out for the Lord. Okay, we hear from her. We hear from her again. Praise God. Ryan, Ryan Trogler, Ryan Trogler in Pennsylvania. Praise God. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Oh, I'm doing very well, Pastor Carter. How are you, Miss Jackie, doing? We are doing fine. Praise the Lord. We are doing fine. We are blessed. We, we're blessed, and we just thank God for his mighty work in our lives. And Amen. we thank God for what he's doing in your life and Tara's life and Jenna's life. Hey, Ryan, uh, tell us. We've been praying for uh, uh, for you all. Tell tell everybody about your new job. Oh, yes, sir. Um, the Lord really blessed me with the new job here. Um, actually, it's, it's the job, the pay, is actually two and a half times more than what I'm making now. So I give all the praise. Woo, 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 woo. The Lord, man. I mean, it, it was all through him. I mean, I didn't do nothing. It was all, I mean, I've been praying for it and praying for it and praying about it. And the Lord said, here you go. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We've been praying for you, Ryan, and um, praying that God will bless your finances, bless your family. And God gave Ryan a new job, ladies and gentlemen, and he's making two and a half times as much as he had been making. That's a shout out to the Lord. Woo-hoo. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a Amen. mighty God we serve. Hey, Jackie Fisher, what do you think about that testimony? I had some coffee in my mouth. Sorry. <laughs> I'm praising the Lord for Ryan's new job. Praise God. Praise God. You see, Ryan, when one is blessed, all of us are blessed. And, hey, Philip, up in Nova Scotia, when one hurts, all of us hurt. We're family. Ladies and gentlemen, give a shout-out to Philip and Ter Teresa. They're on live with us from Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Perry. Perry. I keep calling him Philip. Philip. <laughs> it's I okay. Mean, That's Perry. quite all right. Perry, come on and say hello to us again, Perry. Hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. I just want to thank God for all his His blessings and his mercy and his grace that he, he gives us every day. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you again, Perry, from Nova Scotia, New Scotland, <laughs> up in Canada. Yes, sir. Praise God. And I want to bring this next guy on. I, this, this guy is kind of dear to my heart, really dear to my heart, and I think about him every day. And, um, you know, no, there's nothing wrong with me because I'm thinking about a certain guy every day. Other than Jesus, I think about this guy every day. 
That's my son, Wes. Hey, Wes, come on and say hello to us. Hey, good morning, and um, we think about you every day, too. Good, good, good. Praise God, Wes and Marisol and the family, uh, uh, my granddaughters, Aaliyah, Marila, and, and we thank God for you and pray to God to continue blessing you and keeping you, meeting every need you have. Keep on worshiping him. Man, it is so good to see my son on, online today. Praise God. Okay, Amen. we're going down. We're going to go down into Midlothian, Texas, and we're going to greet. Uh, we're going to greet Zisla Brigant. Zisla, come on and say hello to us, would you please? Hello, good morning, Pastor Carter. Good to be here. Merry Christmas to everyone. Praise God. Thank you, Zisla. Thank you, Zisla. And we have not forgotten Colorado. You know, what would the nation be without Colorado? Let's bring Terry Chiquito on, Miss Jeep Girl, we call her. Jeep, come on and say hello to us from Colorado. Hi, Pastor. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as well. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Keep on serving the Lord. Keep on giving God the praise. And we know there are others on, and, and uh, we, we hope to get to you a little bit later on. Uh, we've got the chat window, and, and Ryan uh, helps out in the chat window. We thank God. <clears throat> you say, well, where is Miss Jackie during the online church? Well, Miss Jackie is at the brick-and-mortar church. We're trying to marry the brick-and-mortar church with the online church. We're trying to get the brick and mortar church to see that the online church, we're all part of the body of Christ. And God plants people in the brick and mortar. God plants people in the online church. And together, we can flip this nation. We can flip the world upside down for Jesus. We're obeying God with the, uh, his command for the great uh, commission. And so we just praise God. Uh, if Jackie were here, she would tell you she loves you. And uh, we pray for you guys all the time. And so let's get ready for uh, a message today. I want to talk about this uh, term. It's called kenosis. Kenosis. I'm going to put it in the chat window. Kenosis. K-E-N-O-S-I-S. -S. Now, I'm not going to try to be theologically deep because I ain't theologically deep. Dustina, I ain't deep. I'm just down to earth. I ain't deep. There ain't nothing deep about me. Praise God. But I want to talk about this idea called kenosis. And um, I advertise on uh, Facebook about how Jesus came all the way from heaven down to save a wretch like me. And I also told, told the Facebook family, Jesus came all the way down to save a wretch like you, too. And so we want to take a look at, um, in a moment, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. But before we go there, I want to ask my friend Ryan Trogler from up in Marysville, Pennsylvania, to lead us in prayer. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, <clears throat> Okay, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another month, another day. We want to thank you for giving us your blessed word. And we want you to give uh, your strength and the power to Pastor Carter so we can give us, so he can give us the word. And we want to thank you for your presence every day of our life. And we want you to come down here and heal the sick, heal the blind, heal the deaf so they can see you and, and hear your word. And we just want to do that in Jesus' Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Ryan, I appreciate you. We appreciate you here at the online church, and we thank God for uh, how he's using you. Thank God for your courage, for your faith, for your faithfulness. We thank God for every one of you. I want to personally thank you for taking time out this morning, uh, coming online. We usually stay online for about an hour. Uh, included in this is a message, and then... Uh, uh, we take some prayer time. We, we want to pray for people who have needs, and if your needs are something you'd like to relate, um, uh, either in the chat window or uh, in, in person during the time of prayer, we want to take time and pray for you. But if your situation is personal and, and you don't want everybody in your business 
and which is good, which is good. <clears throat> That'll be your call. Then you can call me, uh, or you can email me, and I'll be glad to attend to your situation. And we get the prayer warriors, we get the intercessors praying for you. And so um, we want to honor God um, with the word, the message that the Lord has put on our heart this morning. And um, the message has two titles. One is, What is the Kenosis? Now, if I, if I were talking to the theologically egg-headed people, uh, they would have an idea of what I'm talking about. But I'm not talking to theologians, and so let's break that message down and, and let's call it all the way from heaven down to save a wretch like me. All the way from heaven down to save a wretch from me. I remember years ago, uh, years ago, when I first when I first got saved and I, I joined the choir in this church, I did I didn't know much about Jesus. All I knew was what they had taught me in Sunday school. When I was growing up as a child, I didn't know really what salvation was, but I joined the choir, and the choir sang this song, All the way from heaven down, all the way from heaven down, all the way from heaven down, to save a wretch like me. And then the song said, I came to Jesus as I was, weary, weak, and Sad, he gave to me a resting place, and he has made me glad. I've never forgotten that song. That song has been in my spirit for over 40 years. He came all the way from heaven down to save a wretch like me. And he came not just to save me, but he came to save you, and he came to save everybody. And if you're not saved today, you can be saved today. If you're not saved today and you want to be saved, just type in the chat window, I want to be saved, or, or, or uh, IWTBS, IWTBS, and I'll get back to you later on. Just type IBTBS, I want to be saved, and um, praise God. And don't be ashamed. If you're not saved and you want to be saved, just type in the chat window, IWTBS, or later on in the uh um, talking period, prayer period, <clears throat> express that you want to be saved. Or if you have people in your household, people listening to this message today who want to be saved, we want them to be saved. God wants all to be saved. And and we're going to just blow this out of the window right now. There are some people who say, but I'm too far gone. I've been in this too long. I've been a sinner a long time. It's Beyond hope for me. No, 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 no. It is not beyond hope for you. Let's listen to this word. Let's turn in the book of Philippians or download Philippians chapter 2. I want to start reading with verse 5 and go through verse 11. And then we're going to ask the Holy Spirit just to break it down for us, make it plain. The scripture says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in earth and of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, that and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is a powerful scripture, a very powerful scripture. It starts off with by reminding us, Paul is writing to the church in Philippi, and he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What's Paul mean by let this mind 
be in you that was in Christ Jesus. He's saying, let this mind of self-emptying be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. In this passage of Scripture, which is called the kenosis passage, the kenosis, and the word kenosis comes from the Greek a word kanao, kanao meaning empty, empty himself. Jesus emptied himself. We're going to talk about that a little later on, how he emptied himself so that he could serve the Lord. And the Bible reminds us that we need to empty ourselves of everything that is preventing us from serving the Lord. There are many things that we need to empty ourselves from. Pride, selfishness, self-righteousness, and in the church, we need to empty ourselves of denominationalism and spiritual pride, lust, uh, 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 pervertedness, uh, uh, lasciviousness, adultery, lying, stealing. I mean, all these things go on in the church, which they should not be. Uh, hating one another, we need to empty ourselves of hatred empty ourselves of contention. We, can you imagine what our nation would be, <clears throat> especially in the backdrop of a government shutdown? Can you imagine what our nation would be if, if the leaders would stop the lying and if they would empty themselves and let Christ Jesus live in them and govern this nation? Oh, what a mighty, mighty nation this would be. And so the scripture says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. In other words, we have to have a mind to empty ourselves of self. That is perhaps the most difficult thing there is for men, women, boys, and girls to empty ourselves because everyone wants to do their own thing. But when we empty ourselves and when you're truly born again, you empty yourself and say, Lord, whatever you have me to do, I will do. And Lord, whatever it takes for me to do it, let it be, and, 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 and Lord, deliver me from the spirit of pride. There are many of us in the body of Christ. We need to renounce the spirit of pride. Uh, we need to humble ourselves. Jesus humbled himself. He humbled himself. Look, and, and as we celebrate Christmas, as we go around telling people Merry Christmas, we're celebrating the birth of God into the earth. We're celebrating God coming from heaven down to save wretches like us. We're talking about God Almighty, the very God, Jesus the Christ, who was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him nothing was made that was made. We're looking at Jesus volunteering in heaven <clears throat> because God so loved the world. He did not want to destroy the world. God wanted to give mankind an opportunity to be saved and to live eternally with God in heaven. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God made mankind to worship him. God made us. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. We were made for the, the sole purpose of worshiping God. But Satan messed mankind up. Satan messed Adam and Eve up. And as a result, every one of us has been messed up by the devil. And, and the devil is out to rob, kill, and destroy. He holds no punches. He uses every trick in the book to destroy people, to get them not to worship God. And so God does not want to destroy people. First John, uh, First Peter 3, 9 says, God is uh, uh, long-suffering, not willing that any should uh, uh, perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants people to repent. And the, the, the best way that God uh, uh, could imagine and, and put into operation to get people to repent so that people can re be restored to God was to send his only son, Jesus, into the world to die for us. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, this whole kenosis theory, this whole thing about kenosis or the, the kenosis idea that we find in Philippians chapter 2, is all about God Almighty in all of his holiness, in all of his glory, in all of his beauty, in all of his righteousness. He emptied himself. Jesus emptied himself. In other words, he left 
heaven. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, when you get the true meaning of Christmas and pass it on to others, and when people understand what Christmas is all about, it will blow Santa Claus out the window. It blows Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer out the window. It blows Frosty the Snowman out the window. It blows lollipops and candy canes out the window. When we look at what Jesus did, it's not about uh, 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 buying gifts for one another and exchanging gifts or taking those gifts back to the store for the money. No, it's all about the birth of God into the world because God saw a messed up world. The world was messed up by Satan. And, and the only way that God can reconcile mankind to himself, in other words, bring us back to himself, because we were all wretched. We were wretches, wretches undone. But the only way God could bring us back was to leave heaven and to come on earth and pay the price, the sacrifice. Now, God had already instituted an animal sacrificial system so that whenever God's people sinned, they could take an animal to the, to the temple and the priest would slay the animal and uh, put the blood of the animal on the altar and pray a prayer and burn the animal unto God and God would receive that sacrifice and it would cover the sins of the people. And once a year, on the Day of Atonement, God did, uh, covered the sins of all the people of Israel. No matter what they did, their sins were covered once a year. But, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that, those sins were not removed. Those sins were never destroyed or removed. They were covered by the blood of animals. And God wants more for that. And so he looked around, and angels could not uh, pay the price, no, because angels were not, uh, 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 could not identify with mankind. And Jesus, God, the Son, the second person of the Godhead, Jesus, the Christ, he said he would come and, 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 and live on the earth. And so, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at Jesus uh, uh, humbling himself, humbling himself, uh, uh, emptying himself, this self-emptying that Jesus did in heaven. Jesus emptied himself of his glory in heaven. In other words, he volunteered to separate himself from his Father for the first time in all eternity. For the first time, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus decided that he would separate himself from his Father, leave heaven, and come to earth and live on earth as a man. He wanted to come to earth and be born as a child in a manger. And so God uh, uh, sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, uh, overcame Mary, a virgin, a woman who had never been touched by a man. And God, the Holy Spirit, planted the seed of God, the seed of God, the same seed that God spoke of in Genesis 315 that would destroy the enemy's head. God planted the seed in the virgin Mary, and Mary conceived this conception. It's called the Immaculate Conception, uh, not by man, but by God. Uh, when, when Mary was told that she was pregnant, she said, how can this thing be? I've never known a man. And the, and the angel of the Lord said, this holy thing uh, that is conceived in you, that is formed in you, is of the Lord God Almighty. And the Bible says Mary pondered those things in her heart. And she even said, let it be done according to your maidservant, according to your will. And so God planted Jesus as a seed. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, God took Jesus, the second part of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, who is God with all the fullness and all the glory of God. And God wrapped all of the glory of God and the fullness of Jesus Christ into a little seed and planted the seed in the womb of a virgin named Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get this, when you see what God did so that he could save us from our sins and save us from ourselves, when you get this, it will blow your mind. 
but it will destroy the yoke of sin. It will destroy the yoke of oppression. It will destroy the yoke of doubt and unbelief. This is how people get saved when they believe. God sent his, his word. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. And so before Jesus could die on the cross, he had to come on the earth and live as a man. He took on the form of a human body wrapped up in a little baby, a little child. He, and, 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 and he had to learn all the things that a child has to learn. We know that Jesus is God, that he's omnipotent, he's omniscient, and he's omnipresent. But Jesus left all of that, left all of that and became a child. And, and he was trained by his parents, his, uh, uh, Joseph and Mary. He was trained by the Holy Spirit, and he learned. He learned. He went to the synagogue. He learned. He studied the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen. These things did not come to him automatically because he emptied himself in heaven. He emptied himself of all that in heaven and came to earth to live as a person just as you and I live. He identified with fallen mankind. He became one of us, yet without sin. Ladies and gentlemen, when you encompass this, when you embrace this, the great love of God, the magnitude of God's love for us, it will set you free. It will set you free. And all of this was done because God loves us so much. Not just the church. God loves all mankind. God loves people no matter who they are, no matter what they did, no matter what side of the tracks they live on, no matter what side of the mountain they live on. God loves all people. And the Bible says, for whosoever shall believe shall be saved. And so we look at this passage in Philippians uh, chapter 2, which is called the kenosis of, of Scripture, and we see the Lord emptying himself. And we see the word of God that says in verse 6, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus, in the form of God, being very God, he did not think it robbery to be equal with God, and so he made himself of no reputation. In other words, even though he was equal with God, he became as man. He became as a man, an ordinary man, as a child, unequal with God, even though he was God. He was equal with God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are equal. Jesus left all that in glory to live in this earth as you and I do, witnessing and experiencing every temptation that comes upon mankind, everything the devil throws against us, the devil threw it against Jesus. Yet, Jesus was without sin, ladies and gentlemen, even though, and people may say, well, he was God on earth. <clears throat> he came to earth, ladies and gentlemen, as a little child, just like you and I came into this world. We came into this world. We didn't know nothing. We didn't know diddly squat. Jesus came into this life. He didn't know anything. He didn't know diddly squat. All he knew that he was to be faithful to his father, and he learned. He went to school. He did not hook his school. He did not rob people. He did not stick up people. He did not sell drugs. He did not engage in, 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 in uh, homosexuality. He did not, did not engage in, in adultery or fornication. He kept his faith and promise to God the Father. He learned. He studied the scripture. And he even said, I cannot do anything unless I see my father do it. But ladies and gentlemen, here is the scripture. The scripture. Jesus could not do anything until he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus waited on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He could not minister. He could not be effective. He could not heal the sick. He could not raise the dead. Yes, he was very God in the person of, of a man, 
but he could not do anything until the Spirit came upon him. Why is the church fighting the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Why is the church fighting the Holy Spirit? Why is the church still trying to do their own thing without the Holy Ghost? You can't do a thing without the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen. And so we see John the Baptist baptizing in the Jordan. And one day Jesus came by and Jesus said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus walked into the Jordan River and said, John, baptize me. And John said, Oh, no, no, you need to baptize me. See, John recognized who his cousin was. He knew he was the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ. And But Jesus said, Suffer it to be, John, baptize me. In other words, Jesus realized that he had left he had emptied himself in heaven, and he had come to earth as a man. He left everything he had in heaven and came to earth as a man to live just like you and I. He was no better than the average ordinary person. He left everything in glory, and he said, I need to be baptized, even though he was without sin. Baptize me. Baptize me. Baptize me. In other words, Jesus identified with the power of God the Father, the power of God to deliver, and he called upon the power of God. And when Jesus came up out of the water after John baptized him, the Bible says, there came the form of a dove out of heaven and lit on Jesus' shoulders, and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus not only was baptized to signify the new birth, but he also received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him. I don't, know how, I don't know how preachers kick that part of the Bible out, but you can't live without the Holy Ghost. Put that part back in your Bible, preacher. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was when Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit that Satan tempted him. The Holy Spirit then led Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days in which Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. In other words, the devil tempted Jesus to stop his mission, to uh, 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 abort that mission. The devil tried all he could to get Jesus to denounce God, to denounce his mission, and to go on his own. And that's how the devil gets so many of you, so many of us. He gets so many people. The devil gets us into doing our own thing. There are people listening to me right now. You know you need to be saved. You know you're not saved. You know that there's only one way to be saved, and that's believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But some of you are holding out to the very end. Well, I'm tell you, let me tell you this like it is. The end is coming soon. The end is coming soon. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death, the resurrection. It is appointed. You're going to die. I'm going to die. At some point, we're going to die. Whether you live in Nova Scotia, whether you live in Colorado, whether you live in Egypt, whether you live in uh, Kenya, whether you live in South America, whether you live in North America, whether you live in Europe or Asia, you are going to die. You and I have an appointment with death. You may as well open your appointment book and write in there, I must die at some point. But then the Bible says, but after death comes the judgment. After death comes the judgment. And some of you are holding up. Oh, you think you can keep on drinking that alcohol. You think you can keep on smoking that reefer. You think you can keep on popping those opioids. You think you can keep on uh, uh, having sex with your neighbor's wife. You think you can keep on lying. You think you can keep on cheating. You think you can keep on lying in the government. But the day is coming where there is going to be an appointment with death. And after death comes the, the, uh, the judgment. And if, if you are and I have to face God and, 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 and have to say, no, I did not accept Jesus. I, I, I wasn't ready. Uh, I, I wasn't, just wasn't ready. And, and all of your excuses, ladies and gentlemen, oh, I went to church. I went to church, ladies and gentlemen, right now all over America at this hour, 11.43 a.m. Eastern Time. There are millions of people sitting up in church on the East Coast, sitting up in church. 
and they're going to bust hell wide open because they think that going to church is going to save them. And then there are going to be people in front of, standing before God with the boldness, the audacity to say, but I got baptized. I got baptized. Yes, 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 you got baptized, but the Bible says you must be born again. Did you receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord? I'm not talking about taking a cup of grape juice and eating a wafer or cracker and, and, and saying this, I take this as the body of Christ and I take this as the blood of Christ going through the uh, head motion of, of communion with God. No, 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 no. You must be born again. We must empty ourselves as Philippians 2, 5 says. Let this mind be in us as was in Christ. We must empty ourselves. Empty that, uh, get rid of that degree that you have. Get rid of that education you have. Get rid, rid of that family position you have. Get rid of the, those excuses. Get rid of the money. Money can't save you. You can sit in the first pew in the greatest cathedral in, in America and still bust hell wide open. You can, you can ride in a limo to church every Sunday and sit in a private box, a private pew, uh, but that will not save you. You can get baptized, uh, and, and still that will not save you. Baptism never saved anybody. You must be born again. That is why Jesus said, God, prepare me a body. I will empty myself. I will go to earth. I will live on earth. I will die for, for all mankind. Yet without sin, and Jesus took his uh, guidance from God the Father. He said, I cannot do anything, I cannot teach anything, I cannot say anything unless I see my Father do it. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. His whole life on earth uh, was obeying the Father, but yet he studied, he studied, he studied. And, 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 and showed himself approved unto God. And then when he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost at the age of 30, at the age of 30, then he was ready for ministry. He went through that temptation. He defeated the, the devil during those 40 days of temptation. And then Jesus went out doing good. He healed all manner of sickness. He cast out diseases. He cast out demons. He gave people new life all because of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, three God, the triune God, a partnership, they work together in us. That is why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need, first of all, to be born again by the Holy Spirit. When you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are born again by the Holy Spirit. Then we need to study ourselves to be approved. We need to get into a Bible teaching church. We need to study that Bible. We need to teach our family the Bible. We need to learn how to pray. We need to learn how to communicate with God, not just to talk with Him, but how to listen to Him, how to obey Him. The Bible says Jesus emptied Himself. And so we need to empty ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to stand before the almighty, awesome, righteous God and make an excuse about why we did not get saved. We do not, you and I, need not uh, stand before God and make some excuse about why we did not live holy and righteous. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not need to stand before the almighty God and and give God some excuse of why we kept on being racist, why we hated people because their skin was different, or why we hated people because they were of a different ethnicity. We do not need to stand before the Almighty God and, and, and continue to spin the lies that we do while we live here on earth. Many people, their whole lives are lie after lie after lie after lie. You see that coming out of Washington, D.C. now. The time for lying is going to come to an end in Washington, D.C. How long is God going to put up with this madness? And how long do you think God is going to put up with you? How long are you going to put off this thing called salvation? You say, well, I'm born again, Pastor. So you're not talking to me while I'm preaching to the choir. Now you go out and make somebody else born again. You teach them how to get saved. You pray for them. You labor with them. You stay in the bathroom until they get saved. You stay in the bathroom until 
they get delivered from alcohol. You stay in the battle with them until they get delivered from drugs. You stay in the battle with them until they get delivered from homosexuality or lesbianism. You stay with them like Jesus stayed with us while we were being delivered. The Bible says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The Lord is with us. I thank God, I thank God, I thank God for how Jesus emptied himself. He humbled himself, became a man. The scripture says in, in uh, Psalm 8, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou rememberest him? For thou made him a little lower than the angels. God made mankind a little lower than the angels. Yet Jesus counted it not robbery to leave heaven and leave all the glory of God for 33 years. He left the glory of God, the daily fellowship, the daily communion with God, the daily presence of God. Jesus left all the riches of glory to come to earth to live on this wretched, sin-sick, sin-filled earth to show us the way to the Father. He became the word of God that was a light unto our feet, a lamp unto our feet, and a light unto our path. He showed us the way. The way has been made plain, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go off on the deep end. Don't try to find God uh, your other way, some other way. Cast down those idols. Get rid of all those things, those high things that have elevated themselves in your mind. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Cast down those vain imaginations. Stop making excuses. Romans, uh, Romans 8 says, Thou art inexcusable, O man. There will be no excuse when we stand before God. God is pleading with us. The Holy Spirit is pleading with us. Every time a preacher uh, appears on television or on the Internet church or on a radio program, that preacher ought to be preaching Christ Jesus and giving people an opportunity to get saved. Don't beat up the preacher. Don't kill the preacher. Don't kill the postman. The, he's bringing you good news. I bring good news, good news, good news. The king is here. The king is here. There's a man at the river giving sight to the blind. He wants to give sight to the blind. Circumcise the foreskin of your heart, ladies and gentlemen. Stop making excuses. Humble yourself. Empty yourself. Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. You may say, well, the Bible says a little wine for thy stomach's sake. No, no, no. That's what Paul told Timothy because Timothy had a, a sickness, a disease. Or uh, it's all right to smoke grass. It's all right to smoke reefer. Uh, has the government legalized it? No, no, no. Just because the government legalized marijuana, no, it's not all right to smoke it. No, it's not even all right to drink it in a tea or take it in pill form. Uh, uh, the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he's the one who gives us the truth. He is the spirit of truth. He is here. He is here. He is here. He's available for every born-again believer. He's available. Just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. Empty yourself. Declare that I empty myself before you, God. I receive you, Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to come in and live inside of you and guide you. That's what Jesus did when, uh, uh, when John said, He Behold the one who comes uh, to, to save the world for our sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus relied upon the Holy Spirit. He was baptized to identify with sinful man, but he received the Holy Spirit. The Bible gives us a witness that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. The dove came down out of heaven and sat on Jesus' shoulder. That was symbolic of the Holy Spirit entering into him. And then a voice from heaven, a voice from heaven, heaven opened up and God himself spoke and the witnesses recorded what God spoke. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So don't fight God. Don't fight God. Repent of your sins. Repent of the sins of your household. Repent of the sins of our nation and keep on preaching the gospel. Keep on sharing the gospel. Keep on letting men and women start with your family, ladies and gentlemen. Start with your family. 
in addition to saying Merry Christmas to them, in addition to giving them gifts and showing them love, let them know what Christmas is all about. He came all the way from heaven down to save a wretch like me. Christmas means the birthday of Christ. He came all the way from heaven down to save a wretch like me. And I was most messed up. I don't know about you, but I was most messed up. But the Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So he came all the way from heaven down to save wretches like us. Oh, I thank God for the gift of salvation and eternal life. I thank God for giving you the gift of salvation and eternal life. I praise God that through this message, uh, those who are listening in other lands, those who are listening, listen, who are listening to the recording, that you will receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And uh, when you when you say yes, I want to be saved. Just ask the Lord to come into your life. Confess with your mouth, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you emptied yourself and left heaven to come to earth to die for me. I believe you were buried. I believe that on the third day you rose again from the dead, and I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. When you confess that with your mouth, ladies and gentlemen, you shall be saved. Teach others how to make that confession. Teach them what Romans 10, 9 and 10 says. Praise God. And then pray with them. Stick with them. Stick with them. Uh, uh, through the fire, through the rain, through the wind, stick with them. Don't desert them. Uh, uh, God has never left us alone. So when you lead someone to the Lord, stick with them. Stick with them and, 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 and share of the love of Christ with them. Pray for them. When they cry, you cry. When they laugh, you laugh. But stick with them until they come into the place where they can stand on their own and they trust the Lord even more. And then God will release you from that assignment and give you another assignment. We're born again by the Spirit of God. We've been called to share the gospel. Jesus said, go ye into all the world, teaching every nation. Go into all the world, Perry up in Nova Scotia. Go into all of Canada, Jeep Girl. Go into all of Colorado, all of America, West. Go into all of the Caribbean. Go where God leads you. Elijah, go into all of Kenya. And as we build our new church in Kenya, Elijah, bring the people in and tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. As we build our new church in Kenya, Elijah, uh, don't uh, be greedy for money. Be greedy for souls. Be greedy for souls. Uh, strive for the souls of mankind. Teach them about Jesus. You preach Jesus Christ, God will give you everything you need to build the church. And ladies and gentlemen, let us love one another. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We thank you. We thank you, God, that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Thank you for the gift of salvation and eternal life. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the fruits of the Spirit growing in us. Thank you, Father. Now, Lord, thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. Bless each and every one, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Meet every need they have. Lord God, pour out your spirit upon them. Break every yoke of sin. Set your people free. Help them to be patient as they wait on you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you're pouring out miracles upon people. New jobs, healings, miracles. You are the miracle working God. We thank you for healing the sick and for delivering mankind. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you counted it not robbery to leave heaven, to come to earth, to die for us. And so we say, happy birthday, Lord Jesus. Happy birthday, Lord Jesus. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy birthday, Lord Jesus. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. 
Happy birthday, Lord Jesus. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And Lord, we pray that you'll live in multitudes of people this day, that many will open their hearts this day and each day until you return, that people will receive you as Savior and Lord. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. We're going to end the recording. We're going to end the recording. Stick.